Lutheran, you were at Salem Lutheran Church in school. And I welcome you here. I'm a little bit discombobulated because I'm on my phone, but I apologize about that, but we'll keep moving on. Um, let's see. If you could in the chat box type who you are and where you're watching from, that would help us out so we can be more of a community when we know who's here. Um, also, if you have any public prayer requests, please type them in the chat box as well. If you have private prayer requests, please go to our website at salemlutheranglendale.org, salemlutheranglendale.org, and put in your uh, private prayer requests. Or if you need more information about our church and what's going on at Salem and all of our activities, please check that out. Okay, salemlutheranglendale.org. Everybody can say that again. <laughs> um, this worship service is being recorded and will be available on Salem's YouTube channel later today. I will post it up also on our Facebook page because it is not live since my computer isn't working right now. My internet isn't working at the moment. Um, and so I'm welcoming anyone who is watching the replay right now. Thank you for coming. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. We do not have confirmation tonight because something else is in conflict on the television set at the same time. So we will not be going to confirmation tonight or next Sunday because I will not be here. Um, we will continue confirmation on February 27th at five o'clock on the Zoom channel, All right? A couple of very quick announcements. If you are a family with children, you should have gotten a mailing this uh, week that looked with an envelope like this, and it included prayer cards. So if you did not receive this, please contact Lori in the church office because we are still working with our list to make sure that we are getting everybody who should be getting the right stuff. So families with children should be have received the February mailing with prayer cards this week. Um, if you uh, would, are looking for a Bible study to attend, uh -huh. we have one on Thursdays that is called the Sermon on the Mount. If you are interested in doing that, you can come anytime, join anytime on Thursdays at 11 o'clock our time, California time. My dad and I co-teach that together. Also starting not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, Ask, Think, Tell is being taught by the author, Charles Lane, through the Synod office. I'm going to be taking this class. I'm inviting all of you to take this class as well. It is a class learning about generosity, a Bible study on generosity. I think it's a good one to go to just once a month for, I think, five or six months. So it's a good one. Um, our COVID protocol is Sunday worship is on Zoom only. We are hybrid worship starting on March 2nd at 7 o'clock. March 2nd at 7 o'clock happens to be a Wednesday because it is Ash Wednesday. That is the beginning of Lent. The Lenten season is important for our church. Our sermon series will be called Full to the Brim. An expansive Lent. We are going to be following the le lectionary of the assigned text, but we're going to be doing it through the lens of being full to the brim. Okay, so you'll learn more about that. So again, hybrid worship starts Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, March second at seven at March second at so let's see seven p.m. And then every Sunday we will be hybrid after that at ten a.m. in the morning. All right. Okay. So here we go. Uh, one more thumbs up for Hans that you're hearing me okay and seeing me okay. All right, great, thank you. We're gonna begin worship at this time. God does not reside in one place. God is everywhere. Today in this space where I am, where you are, is holy ground. Here at Salem, we believe there is no person or created thing outside the active love and grace of God made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray together. Living God, in Christ, you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. With joy and delight, we gather to praise our holy God. With reverence and awe, we approach our gracious God. We give thanks that God understands us and does not want us to be that which we were never created to become. Creating God, you call us to worship you as your children, made in your image with a divine spark within each one of us. We give thanks that God understands us and encourages us to grow in our knowledge of God's awesome holiness. Glorious God, you invite us to sink our roots deep into your love and holiness and to grow stronger each day in our faith in you. We give thanks that God understands us and that the fruits we bear are consistent with what God created us to become. We gather to worship and praise our supporting and caring God. Amen. Let's sing our opening hymn, which is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, with Dr. J. Please. 
continue with the reading? The first reading is from Jeremiah 17. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. The word of the God. Thanks be to God. Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. We've got a song, Keep Me Near the Cross. Thank you to Hans and Nancy and Ragnar, it looked like in the, the credits there, wonderful. I am on my phone. I am trying one more time to join with my computer to see if it's working. So if you could just give me one second here. It does not look like it is working. So we are gonna give up on that. And I will read the gospel text for you as long as I can tell that you can hear me. Regina, I can see you on my screen. Okay, great, wonderful. Sorry about this. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Oops, and you know what? Did, did I forget to do the children's sermon? 
Yes, I have the children's sermon first. So let's do the children's sermon before we read the, with the gospel text, okay? So I want any kids that can come to the screen to come close to the screen. If there are any here. I think I see Graham as I'm, as I'm going through here. I don't know who else is here, um, but I'm going to go back to my main screen on my phone. It's so hard because it's only one picture that I can see at the moment. So I have something here. Has anybody ever seen one of these before? Graham, if you can unmute yourself, you're the only kid I, I saw on my screen. Have you seen one uh, of these? Yes, I've seen one of those before. What are they? Um, they do, do you know what it does? Yeah, yes, they pop. They pop, don't they? So I started out with a little one like this, and, and you push the little buttons and you pop them. Do you, have you ever played with one of these, Graham? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Is that fun? Yes. It's kind of fun. Okay, so it's just, okay. Then Maggie thought I was having so much fun with this one. She bought me one, a ginormous one for Christmas, okay? And guess what? It's kind of fun. It's really fun when you first start doing it. It's fun. And then all of a sudden, when you, it starts to get stressful because it's a lot of work to try to pop all these buttons, right? All these bubbles, right? Okay, it becomes work. It's not fun anymore, okay? All right. So um, that's a bummer. And that's kind of the way of the world. The way of the world are there's lots of fun things that we can do in the beginning. Lots of fun things that we can want to have. Like, like when I was a little kid, I would watch cartoons on Saturday morning and they would have commercials for all these really fun toys and I'd want them. And then I'd get maybe one or two of them and then it would be fun for a little while and then I'd get tired out because it wasn't fun anymore, right? I just didn't like it anymore. And that's kind of the way of the world. The world um, gives us something fun or enjoyable or something we want. And for a little bit, we, we like it. And then we want something else. Okay. That's not God's way though. God's way may be to have fun at first sometimes, but a lot of times God's way actually is kind of work. It's kind of work, but it brings joy and happiness and delight in the end. So last Sunday, Maggie and I went to um, a place called Project Angel Food. And Hans, if I'm a co-host on my phone, I don't know if I am or not. Let's see if I can share um, the picture I wanted to share. I'm not sure. Are you able to see that or not? Mm, I, I no, we are not able. No. Okay, that's okay. I was going to show you a picture. Maggie and I went to Project Angel Food last week. And this is something that I think gives God happiness. And it was work, but it was actually fun too. I'm not sure if Maggie's on here to be able to echo my, my fun. But what we did is we made meals. Project Angel Food is a place where you can go and volunteer. And every day they make 3,000 meals for shut-ins around Los Angeles. People who can't get out of their house to get food. People who can't prepare food for themselves. And so we chopped and chopped and chopped broccoli and zucchini for the vegetable portion of the meal. And it was work. But in the end, it, it brought us joy. And it was God's way. God wants us to help other people. God wants us to love other people. God wants us to be kind to other people. And it might not always have that short-term fun, but it has that long-term um, happiness and joy that God wants us to have because we, God wants us to be working in God's way, not the world's way. We're going to talk about that in the Beatitudes right now. So um, thank you, Graham, for participating with me. And again, it's a little bit off-putting for me right now because I can only see myself on the screen. So that's what, that's what happens. So thanks for joining. Let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we know that sometimes the, there are shiny objects in the world that we think are fun and we want to use and do and, and play with. Um, and that's okay. But we know that your way is the way of, the, of what, what you want us to do. You want us to help other people, to love other people, and to be kind to other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I need to put this popping thing away. Otherwise, I'm going to pop it during my sermon, I think. I'll have too much fun there. All right, we're going to read the gospel text now. I think that's next. The gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus came down with the 12, and he stood on the plain, a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of the diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And in all the crowd, and all the crowd was trying to touch Jesus, for power came out of him and healed them. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes upon his disciples and said, Happy are you, poor. I'm sorry, let me start over again. Jesus lifted up his eyes upon his disciples and said, Happy are you, poor, because yours is the kingdom of God. Happy are you who are hungry, 
now and who are hungry now because you will be filled. Happy are you who weep now because you will laugh. Happy are you when men will hate you and shut you off from their company and insult you and cast you out your name as an evil name for the sake of the Son of Man. For look, your reward in heaven will be great. Their fathers used to treat the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, because you have all the comfort you are going to get. Woe to you who are filled, because you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, because you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is what your fathers used to do to the false prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will continue with the sermon. And now I have it up on my screen here, so I'm going to be looking up, unfortunately, but I'll try my best to look at you as well. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and his son Jesus, who is the Christ. A woman and her grandmother were sitting on their porch one day discussing a family, a member of the family. He is just no good, the young woman said. He's completely untrustworthy, not to mention lazy. Yeah, he's bad, said the grandma. And she rocked back and forth in her rocking chair, but Jesus loves him. Mm, I'm not so sure of that, the younger woman persisted. Oh, yes, assured the elderly lady. Jesus loves him. She rocked. She thought for a few more minutes and then added, of course, Jesus doesn't know him like we do. But um, bump, that was a joke. All right. Valentine's Day is tomorrow. And although it is not a religious holiday, it does remind us about love. So I wanted to remind you that Jesus loves you no matter what. After reading today's gospel text, you might not be so sure. Does Jesus really love me? This text is a hard one for us to hear. This part of Luke 6 is known as the Beatitudes. But in my preparation this week, I loved how one author didn't call it the, did not call it the Beatitudes. Instead, he called it a series of bombshells. Some of us are so familiar with the Beatitudes that we may have forgotten how radical, how revolutionary they really are. They take the accepted standards of the world back in the time of Jesus, and still today. And they turn everything upside down, inside out, and all over the place. But before I go any further, I also want to remind you that this is called the beginning, this is the beginning of Jesus's sermon on the plane. Not the airplane, the flat plane, okay? In Matthew's gospel, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. They both have similar content, and they both include different versions of the Beatitudes. Again, if you want to learn more about the Beatitudes and you want to learn about the Sermon on the Mount, the whole Sermon on the Mount from chapters uh, 5 through 7 in Matthew, please come to Bible study on Thursday mornings with my dad and me. This is a shameless plug, but my dad knows a lot about uh, this text, and it is really fun to learn along with him. So please come Thursdays as we walk through the entire Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7. Now back to the Sermon on the Plain from the Gospel of Luke. And this is, again, the section called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, like I said, are radical. They're revolutionary. They actually turn the world upside down. So the people that Jesus calls happy or blessed are the people the world calls miserable. The people Jesus called miserable are the people the world would call happy or blessed. Essentially, Jesus said, happy are the poor, and woe to the rich. That is opposite of our worldly values. That's not what the world tells us. The world tells us the opposite, right? So this is the year of Luke for our church. So a majority of the lectionary or assigned gospel texts are from the book of Luke. And Luke constantly reminds us that God's values are radically different from the world's. Saying yes to God may mean saying no to our world, our culture, our family, our friends, our neighbors. Right from the beginning, in Luke chapter 1, Mary's song, or it's also known the Mag or it's also called the Magnificat, Mary sets the stage for this radical message. Mary says that God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God fills the hungry with good things. 
and sent the rich away empty. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus preaches his first sermon, and he echoes Mary's words. God has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery for the sight of the blind, and to set the oppressed free. And now in his second recorded sermon in Luke chapter 6, Jesus again says, the poor, the hungry, the weeping, and the hated are blessed. I want to make something clear. These are not ethical recommendations from Jesus. He isn't telling us to go and be poor or go be hungry or sad or go be an outcast. Actually, Jesus is helping us to understand the way of the world, how it works. It's kind of like he's saying to us, let me give you the lay of the land. As you look around, it looks like the rich, the well-fed, the happy, the admired, they have it all. They have it made. And that God's blessings actually belong to them. And that the rest of the people, the poor, the hungry, the sad, and the excluded, are left out in the cold as if God had forgotten them. But Jesus said, I have come to tell you that the opposite is true. The kingdom of God belongs to you. The poor, the hungry, the sad, and the outcast. And woe to the rich, the well-fed, the happy, and the admired. For what you have now, what you enjoy today, is as good as it gets. If you set your heart and bend your will to obtain the things the world values, you may get them, but that's all you're going to get. If you set your heart on God and put God first, you may run into trouble sometimes by the world's standards but your reward is in heaven. Another way to say this is that if you take the world's way, you are not following the way of God. If you take God's way, you will not follow the values of the world. The challenge of the Beatitudes from Luke is, will you be happy in the world's way or in God's way? Will you be happy in the world's way or in God's way? Will you take the easy way which yields immediate pleasure and profit? Or will you take the harder way, which may have challenges and suffering? Will you take on the pleasure and profit of the moment? Or are you willing to sacrifice for the common good? Will you concentrate on the world's rewards? Or will you concentrate on God? As many of you know, it is tax season right now. I know this because I have a husband and a son who are tax accountants. They are entering what is called busy season. This week, I was talking to someone in our church who said something very surprising. He said to me, I love tax season. I love looking at my tax returns because I am reminded about, about how much money I gave away last year. That person understands today's radical message. He doesn't have the bumper sticker on his car that says the person who dies with the most stuff wins. This person has chosen to try to live God's way and not the world's way. We may find some happiness in chasing success or wealth or status or comfort or security, but we will never find our fulfillment or our God-given purpose in those things. God created us to find our fulfillment, our purpose, our life in living for God. There is hope in this message for all of us. We are included in both the happy blessings and the woes. We are not in one or the other category. When we find ourselves in need or grieving or we feel left out, Jesus brings us the words of blessing and encouragement. When we find ourselves in prosperity or satisfaction or privilege, Jesus brings us the words of challenge. I think woe doesn't mean woe is me. Oh, woe is me. I have no chance. I think it means, whoa, watch out. It calls our attention to change our ways. We have the opportunity to change. We have the opportunity to share God's blessings with our neighbors and with all of creation. We are called by God to reorder our priorities. We are called by God to reorder our priorities and to join God's movement. The kingdom of God is open to everyone. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, a day when the world thinks about love, 
and we see lots of heart themes, right? Tomorrow, we may even enjoy some chocolate or candies and get some flowers. But let's remember that the goal of the Christian life, the reason we were created, was to live life through the heart of Jesus, to change our perspective and live life not for our own fulfillment and happy blessings, but to live life as Jesus lived, to share God's love with other people, to do good works for other people. The purpose of our lives is to bring the heart of Jesus to our world. I'm going to end with one question for you to think about. What would the world be like if we lived out our purpose? What would the world be like if we lived out our purpose? Let's pray. The peace that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with another song. Special music with Emily. Hey, Amy, you are muted. Okay, Thank you to Emily in the praise band. Emily, that was fantastic. That was, fa that was fabulous. Can you hear me now? 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you to Emily and the praise band. Uh, we continue now with our confession of faith using the words of the Epiphany's Creed, the Epiphany Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the creator of the universe, who spoke, let there be light. And there was light setting in motion all of creation and blessing it to this day. I believe in Jesus Christ, the light of the world that shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome it. He embodied humanity in the image of God, in kindness, truthfulness, humility, and devotion. He suffered from the greater good. He was and is the son of God. He died on the cross for us, God's saving grace. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the guiding light of God in our world. Through his spirit, God penetrates and reveals the darkness of human sin. He helps people grow and become the people they are meant to be. I believe in the power of transformation through God's spirit and light here in this world and in the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. Regina will be leading this. Dear God, when you say blessed are those who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God, do your eyes rest on us in the crowd and see how weighed down we are with possessions? When you say, blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be filled, do you place your hand in ours and know the feasts we have eaten? When you say, blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh, do you anoint our heads with oil and sense that we have laughed long and hard? Then bless us again, Lord. Take our riches, our fullness, our laughter, all that we have in excess, and let it rise up in the poor, the hungry, and those who weep, that together we may delight in good things, share bread and wine together, open our hearts in joy and sorrow, knowing that together we will seek your kingdom as one body. Continue to bless those who are in need, who are hurting and who are sick. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. 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 And now my favorite part of the worship service is sharing the peace of the Lord with you. Let us share God's peace. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Peace be with you and also with you. We'll do it again. Peace be with you and also with you. We continue with our offering. The ministry of Salem Lutheran Church is made possible through your generous financial support. Your financial offering and gifts help to continue Salem's mission of spreading God's love to our world. I want to say thank you today to everyone who gives regularly. We are very grateful for your generosity. If you have never made a financial gift before, we invite you to prayerfully consider supporting our ministry so that you can join us as students of Jesus, rooted in grace, embraced by relationship, engaged in sacred struggle, inspired into wonder, and called to serve God's world. You see on the screen here that you can donate your financial offerings by using the Banco Faith app on your phone, Banco Faith app on your phone. Go to the church website at salemlutheranglendale.org. There's a button for donation. Or you may mail a check to Salem Lutheran Church and School at our mailing address. Everything that you give, your time, your talents, and your financial treasures are appreciated. So I say thank you today. Now let us pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving, which you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Happy are those who turn away from the counsel of the wicked, but oh, that counsel can be so seductive. It draws us in, holds us fast, distracts our priorities, obstructs our capacity to love. But we seek no obstructions. We reject wicked counsel. We embrace God's embrace. For whatever ways we don't, 
we confess. In whichever ways we sin, we repent. Hear our prayers, O God, as before you we seek wholeness. Amen. Together we say, God of mercy, grace, reconciliation, and goodness, we are sorry for so much, for words we cannot bear to say, for memories we cannot bear to relive, for thoughts we cannot bear to admit. But you know our hearts. Relieve us of our burdens. Bind our hearts not to the unbearable, but rather to you, so that in all ways we may live in the joy of your salvation and the delight of your, ever lo of your loving embrace. And I say, happy are we, holy people, when we walk in the ways of our God. Happy are we, beloved ones, as we receive God's forgiveness now. Happy are we, God's own, because we are made whole through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are celebrating Holy Communion with us, this is the time for you to get your elements together. If you have it, uh, juice or wine, bread or crackers, we'd like you to bring those to the table at this moment. If not, I want to remind you that Jesus loves you now and forever. Amen. When we are in person, we come to a central table in our worship space. When we are worshiping on Zoom, we come to our tables at home. When we come to these tables, we are joined with all others who do so across time and space. When we gather at our tables to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we bring the bread and wine, simple signs of God's love, humble signs of human labor. When our congregation gathers for the celebration of Holy Communion, we are united with God in Christ, with each other, and with the church's mission in the world. I ask you now to hold up your bread. With thanksgiving, we remember, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. At this time, I ask you to share the bread by saying, this is the body of Christ given for you or given for me. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now hold up your drink. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant, promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. And I ask you at this time to say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you, or this is the blood of Christ shed for me. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Together, let us say the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turned the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. At this time, we'd like to take a moment of silence for prayer. If you could take a peek at the chat box and check out the prayer requests that have been listed, the public prayer requests that are listed there, there are many. Um, if you cannot have access to the chat box, then please take a peek at the squares on your screen and pray for the people that you see in worship today. So let's take a moment to do the, that silent prayer.
Gracious God, hear the prayers that we pray out loud and the prayers that we keep in our hearts that we only share with you. Help us to uh, stay safe and healthy this week. Help people in the world to stay in peace and help those who are conflicted to find peace in themselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with our sending song and then come back for the blessing and benediction and breakout rooms. Shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mind. Comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord on the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound. Thank you to the praise band for our shout to the Lord. I apologize for not having this song with the words on it. I messed up on that, but that happens. That's okay. We still got the music and that was wonderful. Um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask you to go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next week, we have a guest pastor. Pastor Barsh will be preaching for us next week, so please come and hear him. We do have breakout rooms now, so if you'd like to stay for breakout rooms, I'm going to have to ask Hans to do that for me because I can't do it from my computer, my phone. Um, so, Hans, are you able to do that? Otherwise, we'll see you next Sunday, 10 a.m. right here. Uh, the breakout rooms are open. If you'd like to join, click the join screen on Zoom.